Well, my quest for prayer and love of God led me, you know, I read the Fatima story. You're all familiar with the Fatima story. And in the story, um, Mary asked for the keeping of the first five Saturdays. So here we are, grace building upon grace. You just start with something, and God builds on that, and he, and he takes you to where he's going to take you. And so he took me to Carmel. So in keeping my first five Saturdays, because they're first Saturdays, I went to this uh, very beautiful basilica in Jersey, and there were 50 people wearing this really big scapular, and they stayed after Mass, and they prayed 15 decades of the rosary. That's how long ago it was. And um, then they had a priest come and give some spiritual formation talk, and I stayed, and afterwards I'm like, what is this? I, I love it. And they said, well, this is our Carmelite meeting. We're, we're lay Carmelites. And I, I love Therese and Teresa of, um, of Avila, and my favorites. And so I said, sign me up. So that's how I became started in, in becoming a Carmelite. And I've been keeping ever since, you know, studying and keeping the rule. And now I moved to St. Louis and I found a community there. And just growing deeper and deeper in the rule and the, the spiritual life. And it's something I, I want to encourage everyone here too. Now, religious have a rule of life. You know, when you live in community, you have to do certain things at the same time. You know, you can't be having eating food at different times, right? And you have prayer at a set time. And just because we don't live in a cloister or, or in a community doesn't mean we shouldn't have our own rule of life, right? Because we do live in community, our homes. We are the managers of our homes. We are running households, and we are responsible for organizing all these people. And sometimes we say, well, I don't, I'm, you get so busy, you don't have time for prayer. Well, that's nonsense. St. Augustine says, work is what you do when you're not praying. You, have, you set your schedule for prayer, and then you work, work in between. So let's say you have a 9 to 5 job. You're going you're gonna to get up earlier, aren't you? And you're, <laughs> you are. You're going to get up earlier, and you're going to pray, or you're going to have some time on your lunch, and you're going to do this. And then after you do your grocery shopping or your meal planning, and let's say you don't have time to make a meal that night, well, then you better have made double the day before on the weekend, all right? You're planning. You've got to plan your prayer life. You can't just leave it, well, when I have time, or you know, squeeze it in. Uh-uh. You, you have to do it, and um, it should be your priority. So if you're going to go to daily mass, that goes on the schedule. Um, if you want to do your sewing, you got to do it on the schedule. And if you don't have time for sewing, it doesn't go on the schedule. You do something else. You have to do your shopping, or you sit and do homework with so and so, or you got to babysit the grandkids, or you going. You know, your boss wants something extra. You can you can schedule some um, free time. Free time meaning. Overflow times, you know, like the boss wants something special, or the husband needs an errand, or you know, you have a time where you can do those things you weren't planning on doing. You got to plan the unplanned, right? Get it into the schedule because we don't want to be run over by life. We want to take charge and put God first. It's all about seeking first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You got to put God first. Put your prayer first. Meet Him every day for your prayer time. Don't miss because you know if you love someone, you want to spend time with them, right? We love them. We want to spend time. With them. And how can you love someone you don't know? So you need to schedule that time. And then what happens if you schedule the time, okay, with your husband, your boyfriend, whatever, and you don't show? How's that going to make them feel? You're not going to do that, right? You're going to shout. Well, how about Jesus? He's our soulmate. He's our true love. He's our goal. He's the one we're going to spend eternity with. He's our bridegroom. Are we not going to show because the phone rang? We got distracted. We got busy. Somebody wanted us to make a cake for a, a special social or something. We're going to, right? I mean, there, there's a time for service. But there's a time to say no, because that's 
my, you know, I'll do it another time and I can schedule it a little better. I can do that. I can do charity. I can do service. But I have to do it where it's not going to railroad my prayer life. Right? Don't let the world railroad your prayer life. 